This week, Environment comes to you from Fontaine Châtel, a 27 hectare forest in the north of France, where tree houses have been built so that young and old can enjoy the wonders of the woods. Hello and welcome. 2011 marks the UN Year of the Forest, so we've come to take stock of the vegetation that covers 31% of our land and is home to 80% of our biodiversity. Coming up in this week's show, we'll be bringing you to one of the most dangerous islands on the planet where snakes that hang around trees are in trouble as biopirates seek them out for their venomous potential. Next to the majestic Baobab, a giant of a tree that can rise over 20 meters high and 12 meters wide, but which is struggling to stand strong, its roots rotting in soggy soils. And finally, why climate change could be a good thing, that is, if you're a tree. Rising temperatures, some scientists say, is causing spurts in forests in the US of A. Well, here in this forest, uh, there's wild boar, deer and lots of squirrels to be seen. But the rule here is look, don't touch. And from here, we're going to cross to an island off the coast of Brazil, where local fauna, notably snakes, are being stolen. With a venom five times more potent than its closest relative, this unique species is under pressure from man. A speck in the Atlantic, off Brazil. Only a handful of researchers are allowed to step foot here. This is one of the most dangerous places in the world. An island thought to have the biggest population of snakes per square meter on the planet. And not just any snakes. These are Bothrops insularis pit vipers. They can hunt birds in the trees using an ultra-powerful venom. The bird dies very quickly and falls to the ground. The snake comes down the tree and finds the bird. This snake has been isolated on the island and after 2,000 years has become a unique species that doesn't exist anywhere else on the planet. A unique species attracting nefarious attention. Over 12 years, the Bothrops insularis population has shrunk by half. The researchers running the island believe biopirates are responsible. Fishermen say they have seen people leaving the island carrying big crates. Keeping the island under constant watch is too big a task. The island is 37 kilometers offshore. Because of sea and weather conditions, we can't get out to it every day. Our visits are relatively rare. Karina is one of the few scientists allowed on the island. In 2008, as she was returning to port, a man came up to her and made an attractive offer. He said, come on, let's do business together. I know bias. I have contacts ready to pay me $50,000 for just one of these snakes. I'll give you $25,000 and I'll keep $25,000 and it's a good deal for everyone. Among the potential buyers are collectors and big pharmaceutical labs, because venom from a rare snake just might contain a new molecule that could lead to a lucrative new drug. That's what happened with a cousin of Bothrops insularis on the mainland. Its venom has launched a new treatment for high blood pressure. This medicine brought in $5 billion from the pharmaceutical group which patented it. The venom from Bothrops insularis could also contain many new molecules that we don't know about. Brazil, the world leader in biodiversity, is doing all it can to protect its plants and animals, especially in the Amazon, which is a paradise for biopirates. Back here at Fontaine Chatel, the highest treehouse currently stands at 12 meters. High for here, but it wouldn't even be halfway up a tall baobab. Six of the eight species are found only in Madagascar, known locally as Mother of the Forest. The tree provides fruit, all bearing seeds, and even a bark that can be used as a rope. But the majestic giant now faces extinction. On his little deserted planet away in the stars, San Exupery's little prince had an infernal task. Every day he had to uproot baobab trees that were encroaching on his living space. On our own planet, the Isle of the Baobabs is Madagascar. 
The trees, which are sometimes up to 1,000 years old and grow as tall as 40 metres, are steeped in local religion and superstition. In Madagascar, unlike in the Little Prince, there's no need to pull up the baobabs because the trees are in danger of extinction. Changes in agricultural practices have drastically modified the habitat of these holy trees. I used to grow manioc. It was what all my ancestors grew. But when a sugarcane factory was built near here, we decided to take advantage by changing crops. It brings in a lot more money than manioc ever did. The problem is the resultant poor quality of the water is destroying the trees. The baobabs stock water during the rainy seasons. And what they stock, they use in dry periods. But the farmlands around here are flooded all the time, which damages the roots. And the trees face another enemy, isolation. Spared by deforestation, they nonetheless lack the company of other species of trees felled by the locals. Scientists say this enforced solitude could upset the tree's biological system and lead them to die out. The baobabs are soon to become a tourist attraction. The villagers are to be retrained as tour guides, a way of earning some money and of convincing Madagascans the danger of losing such a priceless heritage. Well, having seen how deforestation and unsustainable agriculture can harm or resource-rich forests, a rather surprising note now before we head home. Climate change, it would appear, can be good for trees. That's according to scientists in the United States who say that increased CO2 and heat can lead to growth spurts. Ecologists keeping an eye on trees in Maryland have come up with some surprising findings. The old forests were growing faster, the intermediate aged forests are growing faster, and even the young ones. And they're all growing faster individually. The scientists believe it's a direct result of climate change and rising temperatures. In this region alone, carbon dioxide levels are up 13% on 20 years ago. And the growing season is a week longer than before. When you increase the CO2 concentration around a plant, it grows faster. And when you raise the temperature around a plant up until some point, it grows faster. And if you give a plant longer to grow, well, it'll grow longer as well. More trees, more CO2, and more photosynthesis. And that could just mean improvements for air quality. However, things might not be so simple. Scientists don't expect trees to sustain accelerated growth, since neither the local soil or water have seen any changes. So the planet Earth may not have discovered an improved carbon sink just yet. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of Environment. It's time for us to make like a tree and leave. We'll see you again next time.